BMW, one of the world's biggest luxury automakers, has just announced its launch of the BMW iX5, its very first production hydrogen car. This obviously comes after BMW experimented with the Hydrogen 7 back in 2006, which was utterly one of the most failed product launches in the entire world, with it being one of the most impractical vehicles in the entire industry. So why exactly is BMW investing in a hydrogen production vehicle even though we all know that the costs are extremely high and the infrastructure is non-existent? Well, that question is exactly what we're going to discuss in this video. But as usual guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, let's understand what the iX5 actually is, what market it's expected to target, and why hydrogen makes some sense for heavy duty applications like SUVs. Now, for those that can't already tell, the iX5 is based on the X5 midsize SUV that BMW sells, which falls right in between the seven seater X7 on the right and the X3, which is again, more of a crossover kind of entry level SUV. And so from a product standpoint, it makes perfect sense for BMW to start their hydrogen journey with the X5, which obviously falls right in the middle of their SUV lineup and is probably one of the best selling BMWs across the world. But to truly understand why BMW is even bothering to pursue this hydrogen journey, we need to understand what are the benefits of fuel cells over batteries and where the infrastructure in Europe and America is headed. You see, although the infrastructure costs of hydrogen in the short term have limited its wide scale adoption in dispensing stations and gas stations across the world, there is a massive opportunity for hydrogen in heavy duty applications. These applications are obviously aircraft, ships, heavy duty trucks, and even industrial applications where you simply can't attach a bunch of batteries to decarbonize their operations. And that's obviously because in a lithium ion battery system, all you're doing is storing excess electricity in the form of chemical energy. Whereas with fuel cells, you're actually converting chemical energy physically into electricity. And so at a higher duty cycle, fuel cells can not only provide you a better energy storage system volume than lithium batteries, but they also end up scaling at a smaller rate than lithium batteries. And so the advantage of using a fuel cell from an economic greenhouse gas and system volume perspective exponentially increases as you add more weight and range. And so yes, even though BMW already has a bunch of battery electric products already out there on the market, the reason they're choosing with the iX5 platform to go with hydrogen is because the demand for this fuel is going to exponentially rise in this decade. And when demand rises from the heavy duty applications, it's going to reduce the cost for not only them, but also the lower duty applications like passenger vehicles, which is where the profit margins for a product like the iX5 can collapse. And when you have a head start on an industry as nascent as hydrogen, you're going to have a very big advantage when economies of scale really start to trickle down costs, capital expenditures, and investments start to flourish. And let's be honest, that's not a new phenomenon. Every single innovation or industry in the past 100 years since the Industrial Revolution has followed the same path, where you have an early adopter that is taking a bold bet on a technology that might not be cost effective today, that is getting all the rewards in 50 to 100 years because of the economies of scale and the insane value proposition that it provides to other industries. And not only is Europe extremely serious about producing hydrogen costs effectively, the US is also completely shifting its focus around fuel cells because they understand it's going to be the only way to decarbonize some of their biggest polluting industries. They just announced an $8 billion program to fund the development of clean hydrogen hubs, which is exactly the infrastructure that got the gasoline and natural gas industry going. And that's exactly where there's a lot of misunderstanding around this phenomenon. See, the reason why the BMW Hydrogen 7 project failed was because they leveraged liquefied hydrogen technology as a test bed for exploring hydrogen fuel cells. But the iX5 is a compressed hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. And as we know, compression is much more cost effective and much easier to do than liquefying a very gaseous fuel. 
from the very beginning, liquefied hydrogen was not going to take off because it is mostly reserved for industrial use cases where you don't have a lot of space to store hydrogen. Instead, with the excess electricity and high power output that those facilities have, they're able to liquefy hydrogen by cooling it down and then storing it in a much lesser volume. But for applications where you need instant access to the hydrogen like automotive, that's where compressed makes a lot more sense. And guess what? We've been using compressed gas systems in the global economy for over 75 years. Over 23 million vehicles worldwide already use CNG, which is stored typically around 3500 PSI, which has already demonstrated the ability for most industrial users and manufacturers to compress high pressure gases. And so when you can have hydrogen fuel cell technology come in and completely cut carbon emissions while producing no noise, no vibrations, and providing much less maintenance, you can really see why BMW is investing in it so heavily today so that they can reap the benefits in the future. Because guess what? It's already been shown that producing hydrogen from natural gas is much less pollutive to the environment than converting that natural gas into electricity and using it in a lithium ion battery because it takes an exponential amount of raw materials like lithium, cobalt, and nickel to build that battery as you want more range, because obviously the capacity and power output of a battery system are always coupled together. And as more and more infrastructure for hydrogen production is built, the cost of clean hydrogen is expected to become equivalent with diesel per kilogram at around $1.54 in the next decade, which obviously would make it much more effective for people to purchase fuel cell vehicles, because obviously a fuel cell powertrain offers a much better value proposition than any internal combustion engine vehicle. Not only do you have zero tailpipe emissions, but you also get the same exact driving experience as a battery electric vehicle while being able to refuel and top up your charge in less than five minutes. Now, obviously that is restricted by the infrastructure that is available out there, but a hydrogen station can power and fuel up many more vehicles than an equivalent charging station can because obviously charging takes north of an hour for most consumers. And hydrogen stations can indeed be centralized and hydrogen can be transported in gas and tanks unlike electricity, which is exactly where the practicality for fuel cell technology really starts to shine. And I think those reasons are why BMW is investing in hydrogen, even though in the short term, it makes very little sense for most consumers to purchase these vehicles. BMW is a long term thinking company, and it looks like they're seeing the tailwinds that hydrogen industry is facing, and they clearly want to take advantage of that as fast as possible. But obviously, that is just my take on the situation. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below.